you know, in the next part of this investigation, part C, you need to actually use Excel um, and other techniques to try and represent your data in a way that you can actually start to analyze that. So I'm going to show you a couple of things in Excel. I'm going to show you something with Excel with a stem and leaf plot, and we'll show you how to do some graphs. So um, this video you may want to watch a couple of times as you need to go through certain parts. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, we've selected this question here, question 20, what are the different methods of traveling to school? And what I've done is type down here the bottom things, all the, all the categories that we've got here in there. Now, I'm going to use a thing called a count if. Right? I've already done it for the first one, so I've highlighted the cells I'm counting, and I've put down what I'm actually counting there. So let's do the one for walk. All right? So the first thing you tell Excel that you're putting a formula in is pressing equals. I start typing the word count, and I'm looking for the one count if, so I click on the count if, and then I have to set the range of data I want to select. So I click my mouse on there and I highlight that. These are all the cells that I want to um, sort of check to see if they actually have the word walk. All right, so now I'm going to put a comma. All right, and now in parentheses. So I have to press my parentheses there. Now I type in exactly as it's written in the thing. I have to have a capital there. And then I do the same thing again. Close my bracket. What the computer will do, it will look for that word walk and it will copy that exactly in the spreadsheet there. Right, so the next thing is I have to do these other ones as well. So that's equal to count if. Right, so you select it again. Right, highlight the cells that you want to count. For this one here, it's a bus. Right, so put the comma. Yep, that's my cells. Come down to the bottom again, and then put my comma there, my parentheses, and it's bus. Um, put the right ones in there, and, <clears throat> and so on. So once you've done all of those, let's say we've done the whole lot, and I've got uh, 20 there, and um, 15 there. Now I could have just added them up if I wanted to. I don't have to use that cell, but that's actually a useful thing in Excel to learn. Once I've got that, then I can present this in a number of different ways. Now, if you go and click on the insert button, you have all your charts. So I could do a pie chart, a 3D pie chart, which will give me all of that stuff there. All right, so I can present this information a range of ways. Let's try another one, insert, I could do a histogram. All right. So there's a histogram. I could change the colours if I want to, so I have different colours, but that's giving me the number of people there. Now obviously if I want to, <coughs> want to work in percentages, I need to just convert these things to percentages. Um, what's another way I present that data? Um, probably the two are most important, I suppose, are the stem and leaf plot and the, and the, and the histogram there, are probably the most appropriate for that. Now, so that's what you're going to deal with with your categorical data. That makes sense, hopefully, with that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do here is actually work out the averages for the time that people spend doing things in this section here. Now, in Excel, to work out an average, it's got a little formula for that, equals. Okay, so we can turn, <coughs> type in the word average. See, it's got average there. So we'll just click on that. So they don't use the word mean. And then all I have to do is highlight the cells I'm going to find the average of. Okay, and then enter. And that works out the average for that. For these ones here, this for these cells here, if I click on the bottom, um, if I click on the bottom right hand square, notice it goes to a black, little black cross. That allows me to drag it across. So I've just found out the averages of all of those cells there. So we can type in the word average. Or what's the other word we could use? We could use the word mean. Now the other one that we quite often use is the term median, which is the middle value. So we know 50% of our data lies below the value and 50% lies above. So again, we just type in median. See the word comes up there, so click on that. And now all we do is highlight the cells that we want to find the median of and enter. So the median is 37. So in other words, 37 are above 
50% above 37, 50% below 37. Now, if I go to my thing, bottom right hand corner, drag that across, and that will work at the median all those values. Now, because these are special values in the, in the spreadsheet, what I should do is I should make them bold, okay? Anything that's actually uh, special, bold, or I could even, if I wanted to, I could put a color there so they stand out. All right. Now, the data I actually want to select here to do my bit is I'm going to do the hours spent on the computer. All right, so I've now worked out the median value and average value. So the average that people spend on the computer is 11.34 hours a week, and the median value is eight hours. So 50% of people spend more than eight hours on the computer, 50% spend less than eight hours on the computer. One of the other things that I can do from here uh, is I could obviously do a histogram and all that sort of stuff. Now, the one thing I'm going to show you uh, is I'm going to show you um, how to put this into a stem and leak plot. Okay, so this is actually in your directory on T drive. Um, so overview stem and leak plot. So if I've got some data, I have to go to my. So all I have to do is highlight the, uh, the cells that I've got there. Control copy that, and then I can bring that across to my stem and lift plot, uh, which is that one there. Now, if you go to your data section, close that, then I can just paste that in there. All right, Control V, will paste, and then all I have to do is click on generate a plot. All right, and so what that's done is actually done my stem and lift plot for me in uh, one go. So that shows me. That well, the, obviously these have got uh, a whole heap at 10. I've got say 20, 23, 23, 24, 26, 27, and so on and so on. Right, so that stem and left plot. The other thing it does, it actually works out my median value, my mean value, and my median value, which we've got there. Uh, I think called standard deviation, which we're not going to talk about this year. Uh, it tells me my, my maximum value and my minimum value. And obviously, you've got a sample of 50 there. So that particular one there, I could actually cut and paste and present in my assignment. All right. So that's probably how you want to categorise a lot of your um, a lot of your numerical data will be in a stem and leaf plot. That's the key one that we're doing there. All right. You can see a lot of this data is skewed to the lower value there. Okay. So that there. What called positively skewed, all right? So uh, we can talk about that as well. So anyway, you need to be able to collect two bits of data out of there. Now remembering, you're probably going to be comparing something, so you'll have to do this twice, so you can actually compare two values. So we might be comparing the amount of time that people spend on computers, um, say in year nine, compared to kids in year twelve, or uh, we could do this for boys compared to girls. All right? So there's lots of lots of little comparisons that you can make so you can actually then write about how you feel about two sets of data. The key thing here in this section is we're displaying the information in a way that allows us to analyse it. So if you need some support with this, make sure you catch up with one of us teachers that can certainly help you with that.